Hey, this is Brock with Mirrors, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We've switched over to the C programming language when programming the MSP430, and we're now looking at timers. In this video, we're going to look at setting up a timer overflow that uses a clock as the source, but we're going to speed up the overflow period by changing the counter length to 12. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. Recall that a timer overflow is when we set up the timer to go from its lowest value, zero, up to its highest value, <clears throat> and then roll over, okay? And so before we had a 16-bit timer, well, it is a 16-bit timer, and it can go from zero, 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 up to FFFF. Well, we are going to choose a clock, which is 32 kilohertz on the MSP430 FR2355, and we're gonna drive in the timer, okay? So that's gonna be the source uh, for the timer. And if we leave it in 16-bit mode, it'll go up to FFFF, right? Well, that means that the overflow you know, is always calculated as the, the period of the clock times the number of counts. And so in its default state, that's going to be 2 to the 16. So that can be relatively slow. I mean, it was like the, in our last example, it was, it was overflowing every two seconds. So if I want to speed this up, but I don't want to change over to the fast clock of one megahertz, which is SM clock, one way that I can actually speed this up a little bit is by changing the length of the timer. And so you can come down here and you can use these CNTL bits <clears throat> in the counter length setting, and you can change the length to go from 16 to 12 to 10 to eight actually. And if you look at the impact of that, when I do the calculation right here, I'm gonna have the period of the clock is one over 32 kilohertz, and then I'm gonna change it times two to the 12. And so instead of counting up to FFFF, this most significant nibble is gonna drop off. We're not gonna go there. So we're only going up to FFF. <clears throat> and if you do that calculation, it turns out that that'll overflow every 125 milliseconds. So it's much faster, okay? And so in this example, let's go ahead and code this up uh, to do that. And every time it overflows, I wanna fire and interrupt based upon the timer overflow flag. And then let's toggle LED one. Okay, all right, so here we go. Let's fire up CCS and get going. All right, so let's fire up a new project. <clears throat> and I'm gonna call this <clears throat> C, and then we'll do uh, timers, and then A clock, <clears throat> A clock, oh, not A clock, and then uh, overflow, because that's the type of timer we're setting up. And then we'll do 12 bit to denote that we're not just gonna accept the default state. <clears throat> All right, so it fires up. Here's my skeleton. Let's go ahead and start thinking about what we're going to do. All right, so first and foremost, we need to set up. Let's uh, set up ports, okay? And you say, what ports are we going to do? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to set this thing to overflow. And when it does, we're going to toggle LED1. So if we're going to use LED1, we need to configure it, okay? So we need to, conf uh, let's do this, set port one bit zero to output, and that is LED one, okay? And so to do that, <clears throat> we are going to go to the port one direction register, and we're gonna do a bit wise or with a mask called bit zero. And remember, this is the configuration register name that comes from the header file, and this is a mask that is defined in the header file. <clears throat> and then this shorthand is going to do a bitwise or operation on P1DIR, store it back to P1DIR. So by setting bit zero of this register, I just set port one bit zero to an output. And that's great. And then let's go ahead and put it at zero uh, to begin. So I'm gonna do bitwise and, so I go and percent equals tilde <laughs> with bit zero. And that's how you clear so that's what that right there is going to do. Clear P1 bit zero initially, and that's LED one. And that way, when we fire this up, <clears throat> we know that the LED is off. Okay, we got to turn on the digital I/O system by doing P5 or PM5 power module five control register zero. And what we need to do is clear a bit. So I'm going to do ampersand equals tilde, and the mask is called lock LPM5, which stands for. Uh, Low power mode five, or so just turn on digital, <laughs> digital I, oh. <clears throat> okay, so we're feeling pretty good. The digital I.O. system's on. And now let's set up the timer. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up the timer. And then we're gonna use TB0, just cause that's what we've been using. And so let's think about what we need to do. First and foremost, the recommended programming guide, or the data sheet says to 
assert TB clear initially in order to reset the timer. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do DB0 CTL. <clears throat> That's the timer B0 control register. And I need to set a bit. So I'm going to do a bitwise or with a mask of TBCLR. So those are, we'll do clear, it's actually reset timer. And that's awesome. So TB clear is a mask in the header file. TB zero control is the control register that we're messing with. Now what we need to do is let's choose a clock as source. And I do that by going to the TB zero CTL register again. And I need to bitwise or with a mask called TB SSEL underscore underscore a clock. And that then is going to choose a clock as the source. <clears throat> and then in, by setting this multiplexer, let's leave the first two divider stages at their default value, which means divide by one, divide by one. So 32 kilohertz actually gets to the clock. Okay. And then remember, this is a port, important one. If we want to use overflow, we have to put the mode of the timer into continuous using the MC bits. Continuous is where it will overflow at its max value and fire the timer overflow flag. So to do that, <clears throat> we go to, again, tb 0 cdl and we do a bitwise or in order to set a bit in mc underscore underscore continuous, <clears throat> and that puts, time, whoop, that puts timer into continuous mode. <clears throat> okay, so we almost got everything. <clears throat> the last setting is gonna be tb0, CTL, and we are going to bitwise or with a mask called CNTL underscore one. And now that's going to choose a 12 bit length. Now, when you look at this, <clears throat> we just happened to luck out and all these were setting bits uh, because if you look at this, it just so happened that every one of these bits that we're doing of even when MC is two bits and control is two bits and TB select is two bits. Notice that we're always just configuring one of the configuration bits. And so we kind of got it, we kind of <clears throat> lucked out that we're just able to do these, these bit set uh, statements on one of the bits and that, that one bit happened to correspond to a nice readable mask. So that's not always the case, but it's something to keep in mind. Okay, so the timer's up and running. So now let's do, let's set up timer interrupt. And so first and foremost, let's turn on the local enable for that. And again, luckily it's in TB0 CTL. This TBL control register is very handy. <clears throat> so we do this. TBIE is the mask. And so this is the local enable for overflow. <clears throat> and then we got TB0 CTL. And I need to clear. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that yet. Let's do, uh, let's do the global enable. So let's go underscore, underscore, enable interrupt and I want to see it turn purple got it <laughs> so this is global enable <clears throat> and this is the GIE bit in status register and so that's the same as an assembly of EINT or just a bit set on GIE in SR okay now I've got that last thing I'm going to do as well, I always do is I clear this flag okay, I love clearing this thing so I'm going to go ahead and clear and when I clear I go ampersand equals tilde Always do it like that so you don't forget the tilde. Otherwise, that tilde screw the tilde gives, gets the mask in the right form. Okay. Okay, so then this clears flag. All right, so look at this. I got it. My interrupt is now set up, and I'm just going to make a main loop that does this. So let's do a main loop. And get, what do you want to do? Let's do nothing. Okay, so I'm just going to go boom. So this is loop forever. All right, so that's my main program. And that feels pretty good, pretty easy. Uh, let's see. Not easy, but <laughs> easy if you've been following along. Okay, so now we're down here. We're leaving the main loop, and it is time for us to write the interrupt service routine. Okay, so let's go down here, and let's go. This is going to be ISRs. This is when I set where it's going to put the interrupt service routines, and I need to tell it now, hey, this is a this is an interrupt service routine, and so the the starting address of this needs to be put into a vector location in the interrupt in the vector table. So I do that by telling the compiler, hey, this is something besides a statement, the pregma. We are going to, and then I use this keyword vector, and I give it the name of the vector that I'm, I'm initializing. And that is timer zero, 
Okay, so that's timer zero, and then it's B. Okay, and then the next syntax is one underscore vector. <laughs> okay, you go, what? What is it? Timer B1? What, or is it timer B0? Well, how do you figure that out? That's where you have to go. That's where you have to go back to this table and figure out what the, what's going on. So remember, each timer system, we have timer B0, B1, B2, and B3. The each of them have two vectors. And so if you look at this, we're going for timer zero and then underscore B. And then the three on this just means it has three capture compare registers. It's not telling you it's timer B3. It's the zero underscore B that tells you it's timer B0. And remember, we are looking for this guy right here, TB0 IFG, TB0 IV. That mean that is the overflow interrupt. Okay, that's the flag for the overall overflow. And its vector label in C is timer zero. B1 underscore vector. So that's where that came from. Okay, so now I've got, I've told it that that's where this should go. Now I need to do underscore underscore interrupt. And that tells it that, hey, this, this next routine is an interrupt service routine, not a subroutine. So you need to make sure to use the RETI instruction at the end of this, not just return from a subroutine. So now you just slap in like a standard C subroutine looking thing, but I'm gonna label mine ISR underscore TB0 underscore overflow. And that this name is completely uh, optional. Like I always like to start it with ISR to tell me that, hey, I know for a fact this is an interrupt service routine, nothing else. And so, but you can name that anything you want. Okay, so now here I am. I'm finally in the interrupt service routine, and now it's it's we actually get to think about what are we trying to do here? Oh, if we ever get here, it's because we had a timer overflow, and I'm now going to toggle the LED, and I do that with an exclusive OR. So I do a bitwise exclusive OR with bit zero. So this toggles LED one, and now I'm, I'm done, right? No way. If you're in an interrupt service routine, you got to clear the flag so that you have a chance of having it fire one more time. So luckily I already typed in that clear and that is it. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what kind of syntax errors we had in there. It's a lot of type and a lot of mass names to remember. So usually you have some sort of error. It's like, okay, well, here's one. So let's take a look at what this is. What do we do? Usually forget like a, okay, line 13. Did I forget a TB clear? Oh, it's not that. It's complaining. It's saying this line, it's expecting a semicolon, but it's it, the semicolon was up here. I forgot that one. Okay, so no worries. All right. That always, it's always, the compiler's your friend. Okay, it's always watching your back. <laughs> Which is good. You don't want to just guess at what you're doing. <clears throat> okay, so that's on there. So now let's, uh, it's downloaded. Okay, so now it's time to, let's, let's uh, take a look at the board. Okay, so LED1 is right here. <clears throat> and this is going to overflow every 125 milliseconds. So that means for 125 milliseconds, it's on, then it's off for 125 milliseconds. So that's 250 milliseconds for an on off. So that means it should come on four times a second. So let's just go for it and see if we got it. So I'm going to hit run. <laughs> Boom, there it is. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, we did it. We did it. Nice work. Okay, we did it. This is fantastic. So you have just set up a timer overflow using a clock, and you had it trigger an interrupt, but you a clock was 32 kilohertz. And guess what? That was a little slow. So you sped it up by changing the timer length to 12 bits. All right, congratulations. You did it. And as always, remember, support my channel by subscribing and goodbye.